Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, fellow, fellow seismites, um, my name's Ian Stewart. I'm your master of ceremonies for, uh, for, for today. I'm, I'm an earthquake geologist by training, but I've moved to the dark side and worked in communications and geology really for the last 15 years. And so my job is to be, uh, I've come from the outside to observe the, the occasion and to celebrate the occasion because um, this is a remarkable achievement. This is a project that's been going for, for 10 years or so, but really took motivation after the signing of the UN Sustainable Development Goals in June 2015, when the governing board of, of the Global Earthquake Model decided they were going to complete a global seismic hazard map by the end of this year. And here we are, start of December, in Pavia, celebrating the achievement of, of that thing on the back board there that we'll hear lots more about. So my job really is not to hold back proceedings, but to make sure they proceed on time. So you'll see me jumping in and keeping things going. Um, but I guess the, a, a general remark is, you know, we, we know we're here because of earthquakes. We're here because particularly urban seismic risk explicitly. The 20th century was, um, was remarkably calm in the, in the tendency for large earthquakes to hit large cities. We, we missed most of them. The 21st century is unlikely to be as kind to us, and we know that increasingly, and we'll hear some stories about that. So it's really critical that this stuff, this data, our knowledge, our understanding starts to feed in in a real way. And, and we have Sendai framework now, 2015, really kind of giving us a roadmap of how science and technology, our science and technology needs to fit. And I guess the one thing I'd say from the communications point of view is this notion about how we, how we fuse the top-down expert-driven models that essentially is, is the people in this room with actually the bottom-up grassroots resilience organizations that are starting to happen. And that kind of connection with a people-centered approach, I think, throws up great challenges about how we communicate and disseminate our information to a wide variety of stakeholders. And that's one of the points of GEM, is to not just create this data, to have it used in a meaningful way by communities, individuals, public, media, etc. So I'm, I'm not really going to say any more, um, but except to introduce um, Mauro. Mauro Dolce, which is indicated there, is chairman of the, uh, the governing board um, of GEM. He's uh, director general and scientific advisor of the head of the Italian Department of Civil Protection, and he's also professor of structural engineering at the University of Naples. So, so Mauro. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, everybody. It is a great honor and pleasure for me to be here representing the governing board of GEM for this important event, which is fundamental for GEM, in my opinion, for the entire disaster risk community also. I will read because I have to be strictly on time. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the motivation to, cre to create GEM 10 years ago was to bridge the gap in information in the vision of a, to have a global shared understanding of earthquake risk. GEM was fund founded as a public-private partnership its mission to have a, a world more resilient to earthquakes, following the principles of public good, collaboration, globally to locally, open and transparent information, and credible science. I want to acknowledge the collaboration and funding support of all the public and private sponsors that you see here in this slide and partners, near, nearly all of whom are present here. During work program one, the first five years, the focus of GEM activities was on developing tools, regional hazard models, global data sets, and a collaboration network of partners working within a common framework methodologies and tools. During work program two, in the last five years, 
the Open Quay platform was released in uh, January 2015, and the sub subsequent access uh, to information models was widespread uh, all over the world, with more than 20,000 people accessing the platform in the past few years. Meanwhile, advanced risk assessment capabilities were pursued. Let me also underline the collaboration with the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction and the full alignment of GEN to the Sendai framework, which was signed by 192 countries in March 2015, and which identifies risk assessment as the first priority. The mission of GEM, unavoidably, had to include a shared global risk model, and the commitment was made by the governing board in June 2015 to complete it by the end of 2018. The result would be the culmination of 10 years of collaboration to create a single view of risk through the lens of a mosaic of models developed at the national to regional levels world worldwide. Just a few days ago, the commitment of GEM in its mission and the achieved results were acknowledged by the uh, United Nations uh, ISDR during the European Forum Disaster Risk Reduction, which was held in Rome on the 22-23rd of November. GEM received the Damir Semrin Award in, the in recognition of their leadership in supporting disaster risk reduction. In particular, the global model of GEM seismic risk, which provides remarkable added value in reporting expected annual losses in terms of human lives and economic losses. You see here John receiving the award. And uh, finally, we are here today to see the result of that effort. And uh, let me thank all the past governing board chairman, secretary general, and science board members. Now, I would like to introduce John Schneider, who, as you know, is the GEM Secretary General. He was previously the Chairman of the Governing Board and Representative of Australia. Please, John. Thank you very much, Mauro, and, and all of you for coming. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic occasion for Jem and for all of you, uh, and for all of you to be with us to share the day. So I would like to just give you a little bit of um, a little bit of a flavor of, of this exercise of building models and maps. And as Mauro said, you know, one of our one of our objectives is to make sure that um, that we achieve a common understanding through the development of this information, that we achieve a shared ownership, and that we, in that, in that process, motivate people to actually take uh, action to, to uh, reduce risk. So it's very important for us to, uh, as, as Ian also mentioned, to balance the, the, uh, this, this, um, the, the objectives between essentially top-down science and the bottom-up grassroots, if you will. But we really need to try to share and develop this common understanding of, of risk and a will to, to actually do something about it. So we have, uh, I suppose, first and foremost, our efforts have been to develop what we would call a risk assessment framework. This wasn't always about uh, developing a map, even though it's the, it's the global earthquake model as an organization, our first objective really wasn't to build a model. It was to build a framework for people to work together, to uh, collaborate, to have common methodology and tools, to have open and transparent information, and to have a system of information that was maintainable and could be uh, continuously developed over time. And in that, within that process, we then have developed models and maps 
and, and, and as, as uh, Mauro had mentioned, a mosaic of models represents the bringing together of all that information. The, the maps then represent essentially a snapshot in time. They're not, they're not the end, they're simply where we are today. Those maps, those models are, are for you to use, to share, to modify, to add to, to criticize. So we, we invite you to do that. So I will just give a very brief uh, um, summary here of what we what we are proposing, or actually what we are producing, what we are making available to you and to the rest of the world today. Um, uh, and it, it will be obviously the posters. Posters in print are there in the back, uh, but we will we will provide a PDF. Uh, versions of those maps that can be downloaded. We will also provide an interactive map tool which has various uh, aspects of the data that you will be able to explore and, and Paul Henshaw will be uh, uh, giving us a tour through that later today. Uh, we will have what we call country profiles of risk for over 120 countries that will be uh, for you to download. Uh, there's also an, an updated active fault database of the world available and, uh, and, a, and a database of 300 uh, vulnerability functions for buildings um, around the world that is also available for anyone who wants to use them. Um, and then we have a, over the next year, we have a proposed plan to release all of the underlying models that, that uh, basically have been used to create the maps that you will be uh, seeing today. I won't go through this in detail, but um, if you want to ask more questions about that, we don't have a finalized plan, but we do have we do have a plan, and we 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 will be uh, working out the details of that over the next um, couple of days, and and uh, and indeed the next uh, few months. In uh, early 2020, we will have a, a publication in uh, EERI, a special edition of the, Earth, of the Earthquake Spectre Journal, uh, a series of 24, 25 peer-reviewed papers that is coming out of the production of the, of the uh, models and maps. So this is uh, in process. So I would like to just walk you very quickly through the program uh, this morning and, um, and this afternoon. So. Uh, when I'm finished here, we will have presentations by um, Marco Bagani and uh, Vito Silva on the uh, how we built the hazard and risk uh, models and maps. We'll then take a break. We'll have a, a couple of featured speakers focusing on urban uh, risk and resilience, and uh, and then a panel on the uh, uses of the maps and models. We go to the to lunch, and then afternoon, two more featured speakers, a panel on the drivers and demands for maps, and then a, a demonstration session where we have a, a, about 25 posters and demos. Uh, that will be mid-afternoon. A final um, a final panel uh, to to take us into the future, and then we wrap up. So with that. I would like to um, turn it to back again. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>